In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit test equipment, the IG-72 audio generator. I'll discuss the history and features of the instrument, and we'll look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the generator in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. A signal generator is a device that produces repetitive signals which are useful for testing various types of electronic devices. They're often classified as audio signal generators which produce output over the audible range of frequencies and radio frequency or RF signal generators which generate signals at radio frequencies. Signal generators can produce different signal waveforms, the most common being sine, square, ramp, and triangle waves, with some generators able to produce arbitrary waveforms that are programmable by the user. The Heathkit IG72 is an audio generator. It's useful for testing radio and audio electronics. It can produce sine waves over a range of 10 Hz to 100 kHz at different output levels. Like most Heathkit products, it was sold as a kit that was assembled by the user. It was made from 1962 to 1977 and sold for about 60 US dollars. A factory assembled version, the SG72A, was identical other than a slightly different black and white paint style and sold for about a hundred dollars. The Heathkit IG72 audio generator can produce sine waves from 10 Hz to 100 kHz. Output is continuously adjustable in eight ranges from 0 .003 to 10 volts RMS full scale. A meter indicates the output level calibrated in both volts and decibels. Frequency is selected using front panel switches for the first two significant digits of the frequency as well as a times 1, times 10, times 100 or times 1000 multiplier switch. The unit has a switchable 600 ohm internal load. Output level accuracy is plus or minus 5% of the meter reading and frequency accuracy is plus or minus 5% of the switch settings. Sine wave distortion is less than 0.1% from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. It runs on 120 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz power. The unit uses the same size and style of case as many other Heathkit instruments of this era. The rear panel has only the two-wire power cord. There are four rubber feet on the bottom and a carrying handle on top. The front panel has the following controls. The power switch with power indicated by a pilot lamp that also illuminates the meter. A switch for the selectable internal 600 ohm load. It's not available on the two highest output level ranges. A meter which indicates the level of sine wave output in volts, RMS, and decibels or DBM. A DBM is a power level of one milliwatt usually standardized against a load of 600 ohms. The level has to be scaled by the output level range, so for example it indicates 0 to 10 volts on the 10 volt range and 0 to 1 volt on the 1 volt range. The two sine wave output terminals, the sine wave output level controls, the coarse adjust selects one of eight ranges and the fine adjust controls it continuously from zero to maximum. The output frequency is selected by three knobs. There are knobs for tens and ones, which are multiplied by the multiplier switch, which supports times one, times ten, times a hundred, and times a thousand ranges. For example, when the multiplier is set to one, ten set to fifty, one set to six, the generator will output fifty-six hertz. When the multiplier is set to a thousand, ten set to twenty, and one set to three, the output would be twenty-three thousand hertz. The highest setting possible is 110,000 Hz and lowest is 1 Hz, although it's only rated down to 10 Hz.
The circuitry uses all point-to-point -point wiring both above and below the chassis. On top of the chassis are the three tubes, power transformer, power supply filter capacitor, and range multiplier switch and output level control. Two pots on the chassis are adjusted during calibration. Most of the wiring is under the chassis. There's some more large caps and a filter choke. The power supply also uses a large 20 watt resistor. Seen here is the incandescent lamp. I'll explain its purpose later. The original builder of this unit did a good job assembling it. All of the wiring and soldering is very neatly done. The design uses three tubes, a 6AU6 voltage amplifier, a 6CL6 cathode follower, and a 6X4 power supply rectifier. It also uses three semiconductor diodes in the meter circuit. The design uses the common trick of using an incandescent lamp to stabilize the output level. It acts as a temperature dependent resistor in the feedback network. The idea dates back to the late 1930s and was used in Hewlett Packard's first product, the HP 200A audio signal generator. Note that the lamp has a low current through it and does not visibly light up. Calibration can be done with an AC voltmeter, or if not available, can be done using the 6.3 volts AC transformer winding. The unit does not need to be calibrated for frequency. I bought this unit in February 2015 from a seller near Ottawa on Kijiji. He originally purchased and built it in 1967 as a student who was studying electronics at a local college. He also built a Heathkit vacuum tube voltmeter and oscilloscope around the same time. Before selling it to me, he had just tested it and run through the calibration procedure. It has all the original tubes and other parts and came with the original manual. As far as restoration, I just cleaned the unit including the switch contacts and it checked out fine. The sine wave output is very clean and undistorted all the way up to the maximum rated 100 kilohertz. The output levels are very close to the knob settings. Let's take a look at the unit in operation. I've connected the output to an oscilloscope. When powered on cold, it takes a few seconds for the tubes to warm up. The output level is set by the attenuator using the eight ranges and fine control. The meter shows the output level as is changed by the fine control. It doesn't change with each range as it scales depending on the range. The meter is calibrated so it's reasonably accurate. In order for the output level displayed on the meter to be accurate, either the internal 600 ohm load needs to be turned on or the unit needs to be terminated in a 600 ohm load. Frequency is set by the tens and ones controls and the multiplier. Here we have it set for one kilohertz. The tens and ones controls allow us to directly dial the frequency we want and the multiplier scales it. So here we can see selecting two kilohertz, three kilohertz, and so on up to 10 kilohertz. On the low end, the frequency goes down to 1 hertz. The level of output distortion is only guaranteed down to 20 hertz. By hooking this amplified speaker to the output, we can also hear it. Here again is 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten kilohertz. The IG-72 was a reasonably high quality instrument that sold for a reasonable price. It was one of the longer running pieces of Heathcote equipment being offered for 15 years. It's impressive that this unit is still working and within spec with all the original parts after almost 40 years.
You can learn more about signal generators and other test equipment in my book Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that looks at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage radio and test equipment.